The Muslim holy month of Ramadan has ended, and with it comes celebration, Eid al-Fitr, the holiday of breaking the fast. But in Jerusalem and in the West Bank, the mood is subdued as fellow Palestinians struggle in Gaza with hunger, even starvation, as the war between Israel and Hamas grinds on. Nick Schifrin has this report. At Jerusalem's Damascus Gate, the main entrance to the Old City, the end of the holy month of Ramadan is usually festive and a treat for families. But this year, Jerusalemites say Eid's lights are dimmed and their spirits subdued. What do you usually do? Mustafa and Aman Abu Sway spent Ramadan's final morning preparing zaatar. Yeah, I am making this for my grandkids. A traditional Palestinian spice made of thyme. But in this time of turmoil, they say Ramadan has brought no joy. Everybody here in Jerusalem, they are sad just because of the situation in Gaza. They don't have food, they don't have clothing, they live in tents. It's really bad for them, you know. And we, we support them just not celebrate Eid. Mustafa Abu Sway is an Islamic scholar and lecturer. He's a member of the prestigious Islamic Waqf Council in Jerusalem and for the past 12 years has worked at the Al-Aqsa Mosque, Islam's third holiest shrine, hosting VIPs. Uh, unfortunately, with all these sad stories coming from uh, the Gaza Strip, uh, they uh, had a, a great impact on our uh, psyche, on uh, our hearts are broken, we are sad. Allah. But each day this Ramadan, the Al-Aqsa compound hosted tens of thousands of worshippers to break their fasts and pray together. Friday prayers typically attracted more than 100,000 people. This relative peace was kept as a kind of quiet defiance, despite Hamas military wing spokesman Abu Obeidah's urging Palestinians to march on Al-Aqsa. We call on all our people not to allow the occupation to impose facts on the ground. We also call on the Mujahideen, resistance fighters, and masses of our nation to declare jihad in every battlefield, in every arena. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's spokeswoman Tal Heinrich. Extremist terrorist organizations like Hamas, like Palestinian Islamic Jihad, are trying to inflame the region and even further, and not just our region. They've already called for attacks on Israelis and Jews during Ramadan. But Netanyahu rejected calls from his own security minister, Itamar ben Gavir, to ban Muslims under 70 from Al-Aqsa and restrict access even to Arab citizens of Israel. The entry of worshippers to the Temple Mount will be permitted in similar numbers to previous years. Uh, allowing all those youngsters from, the, uh, from Jerusalem, but also those who have Israel citizenship, uh, did lower the uh, temperature, I would say. Uh, but let's not forget that uh, those from the West Bank, uh, only men above 55 and women above 50 uh, were allowed uh, to, uh, to come to Al-Aqsa Mosque. I can just go. It's like a few kilometers uh, in the north where I am, and I, I can just go. Mustafa Badr is a Palestinian lecturer and author at Dar al-Kalima in Bethlehem in the West Bank. Visiting Al-Aqsa used to be his Ramadan highlight, not this year. I was deprived from practicing uh, the freedom of worship, but also from the freedom of movement. I can't visit Jerusalem. I can't visit my family members who are living there. When you're taking Jerusalem and not allowing us to visit it, it's like taking something from inside us. But his focus remains on Gaza as the UN warns of looming famine in Gazans marked Eid prayers on ruins in Rafah. Palestine is losing lots of people, and it's, it's very hard not to know someone who was killed in this conflict in Gaza. As for Abu Sway, he goes to work every day and talks to worshippers about ending the war. It's about uh, a call for uh, ceasefire, for uh, sustained uh, humanitarian aid, for uh, uh, for a really like a Marshall Plan to rebuild the uh, Gaza Strip. But that call feels far off, even in the old city. With the sound of nearby gunfire and a war that is miles away, but also close to home.
For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Nick Schifrin.